Welcome to the Paradigm Shift, episode 184. We are on the road. It is Mobile Seagull today. On our way to yet another wedding. Not mine. Uh, that was three weeks ago. And uh, let's get absolutely buck wild. All right, guys. Let me know how you're feeling. Throw some questions in the chat. Sweat. And uh, we have two awesome guests on today. So there's that. Max, happy Saturday, brother. Uncle Dave. <laughs> What's up, handsome? How you doing? Fantastic would be an understatement. How are you? Doing good. Um, a mobile seagull today on my way to a day wedding on a Saturday. It'll be interesting to go to a wedding now from a different perspective, having hosted one a few weeks back. Yeah, and it was one of the favorites of all time for me and my wife. We certainly enjoyed it, and uh, we know it's a good start to a great relationship. And speaking of which, both of our guests today, uh, you got my brother and my sister coming on. So uh, very excited. Uh, I've been, uh, <laughs> I, was, I forgot, I was, I was actually on the phone with our first friend today, and I forgot that she was going to be on this, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll talk to you in an hour. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> you got the two C's for me here. Now it's three C's, Craig, Cleona, and Colin. It's the three C's on Saturday before. Whose wedding is it today, by the way? My parents' best friend's kid. Your parents' best friend's kids. Nice. So do you call your parents' best friends aunt and uncles? Or, yeah, uh, I do. You do? I yeah, that's the way it works. So yeah. I got to go to Home Depot after this. I, these these suckers are expensive. This thing ran out. But when when you get married and have and when you have kids and have a house, you'll be filling the fluorescent bulbs back up. Understood. By the way, Very we, important. we got our photos back last night, and there are some unbelievable ones of you. I can't wait to send you. You got it. You know, there's a, there's difference when you and I are in tuxedos. We look good. <laughs> Amen. Speaking of that, where did the, where did those dance moves originate from? So believe it. Or or not my younger cousin was a break dancer and a DJ and he had a break dancing crew and uh, I used to work out with the, the break dancing crew when I was in high school he ended up being in the first uh, rendition of stomp uh, in the city at the Orpheum theater and then directed stomp around the world uh, until his mid 40s so he, he was uh, graduated BU uh, with a theater arts major in his first job uh, he still DJs in the city every once in a while, but him and I still break dance into our 50s. That's impressive. And I get the feeling you just get warmed up, Dave. I'm just kidding. I'm doing it when I'm 90, bro. We'll, we'll be at your grandkids' wedding, and I'll be throwing down the splits. I love that. We buckle up here. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. I'm going to bring on our guest. And uh, while I do, I wanted to ask you, I don't know if I've ever seen anybody prioritize better than you. How do you choose what you want to prioritize? Well, for me, I study time. And in fact, Cleona and I were speaking about time today because people just can't reconcile time. Uh, and so for me, having a framework around each and every day, um, think about this. You, you have activities and you're guaranteed 24 hours a day. We have to separate human experience from spiritual experience because they each have their own time zones. And so... I prioritize my day according to the circumstances of the day by what's important to me today by taking the meaning of the past and aligning it with the divine. So there's divine direction, there's divine detours, and then there's divine time. And so for me, prioritization is quite easy because I have a framework of, okay, I'm guaranteed 24 hours a day every day of my human experience, except for the last day, of my human experience, I'm going to be cheated. Seconds, minutes, or hours. Therefore, I have a framework that's very pragmatic in its nature, which aligns with the pragmatic world that we live in. And so prioritization to me is a framework of what's important to me, who can I help and who can help me, how best can I get it done in these 24 hours? And I also take an abundant perspective. A lot of people don't realize prioritization is the antidote to feeling overwhelmed and procrastination. So abundance, if you live in abundance in infinite time, divine time, you're going to wake up every morning going, holy moly, I have so much 
options, opportunities, and touches of favor, I'm never going to get it done today. I'll get it done in divine time. But today, I am just going to do my best to prioritize what I want to get done today and feel blessed that I can't get everything done because more than enough to do is better than not enough to do. And I'm blessed that I have more than enough to do. I just got to prioritize it. One other thing, prioritization, if you know what to do now and know what to do next, 100% of the things that you do now get done, 100% of the things you do next get done. So you're guaranteeing statistical success to get stuff done. So many people sit in divine and they never get anything done. This is a human experience. This is a human experience. We are spiritual in our nature, but this is a human experience. Experience it, and prioritization is the key uh, to experiencing the human experience. That was so good, Dave. A nugget that really moved me there is the antidote to feeling overwhelmed is prioritization. There you go. Unbelievable. Are you are you passengering or driving? Let's just say hi. Oh, this that's a beautiful chauffeur. Hi, that's the Lexi. driver. <laughs> well, speaking of beautiful, look at this beautiful. beautiful. Cleona, good morning. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing good. Uh, we're so pumped to have you on today. Where are you dialing in from? Where are you right now? So I now live in a little town called Weehawken, New Jersey, next to Hoboken. I used to live in the city, and I moved over here last year. Nice. Before we yes. dive, before. Before we dive in, I have a couple good nuggets for you. I know that you love to talk about. What are you personally most excited about right now? Actually, I'm most excited about what I'm going to be doing and we're going to be doing with David. Yeah. Ah, look at the fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> See, even the divine agrees. <laughs> yes. I love That's it. What, can, you, yeah. can you tell us any more or is it a secret? It's kind of of a secret but david i don't know what do you think well can I we say something level, my passion uh i think if you tell people what you're doing today and just say that david will, will start working with me we don't have to go into the deep yes. detail of what we're doing so i think when people know what you do and to know that i'm going to be heavily involved in helping uh a legacy and a legend uh like cleona so why don't you share with everyone what you're doing? Because yes. we definitely can tell people about that. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so I can tell you that, of course. So um, I'm the CEO of the Napoleon Hill Institute, and I'll give you a little quick history. Napoleon Hill, of course, you all know, I'm sure, is the great author of Think and Grow Rich. And in the 50s, Napoleon Hill created a company called Napoleon Hill Institute with W. Clement Stone. And many people know who that is, the great insurance tycoon. And the two of them got together. Actually, W. Clement Stone convinced Napoleon Hill to come out of retirement in the 50s and said, come on, let's do this together. Let's create a company together. And they created Napoleon Hill Institute. And their vision was to bring the material into corporations to children and to bring coaching programs and create coaches all over the world they they were in business for 10 years and then napoleon hill of course passed on and they didn't have the internet back then so they did everything through in-person events through through the mail so they would send out their programs in the mail and i even have like some of the marketing materials and the envelopes and it's so cool um, so anyways, fast forward to 2023, actually January 11th, 111, 2023. No way. Yes. You know that's my birthday, right? And also no, my puppies. That's, yes, it that's is. That's my number. That's my number, yeah. I was born on January 11th at, 11, at 111. David. Talk about divine synchronicities. My whole that, life, one that was pretty. That was a moment. Has been my number my whole life. Me too, since I've been born. Of course, <laughs> especially you. <laughs> oh my God! Thank you, God. I thought you that was a powerful moment. moment. I, I thought you were joking. Oh my gosh. Yes, on one eleven, the Napoleon Hill Institute reopened its doors, and that's when we started, David, and. Um, I got the great honor and the privilege to lead the coaching division globally 
and Don Green, who's the executive director of the Napoleon Hill Foundation, gave me this honor and privilege. So we're a year and a half old. We have hundreds of coaches already all over the world. We have thousands of clients all over the world. We're doing everything, not through the mail, but online, of course. So that's what I'm up to. And I know now that I know that's your birthday, it's even better. So we're going to be doing great, great, great things together to continue this legacy for Napoleon Hill and kind of take the torch and pick it up where he left off. That's what I want to do. Understood. Yeah, and I, I want to elevate uh, with the experience, situational knowledge, and the blessing. And there, there's no doubt, Craig, you understand this. Uh, when I met Cleona, she had a, a gift for me, which was from my mentor who passed as well. And I look and elevate my awareness for the coincidences, the coinciding of the universe with my attention and my intention. And I have never experienced, next to my wife, which was the greatest coinciding, uh, meeting her in the fourth grade, sitting in a bay window, which I used to sleep in because we didn't have enough beds. Uh, I was small and the, and the bay window was big. My wife skateboarded by me in the fourth grade. My best friend asked her to go study in the sixth grade and she said no. And later on in life, uh, I was pushed into her at a resort literally somebody pushed me into her uh besides that coincidence in my life uh this has to be uh the second greatest coincidence the coinciding which by the way is the lessons of napoleon hill and think and grow rich outwitting the devil to me is one of the most extraordinary uh, uh purposeful pieces of work that will show you the future meaning this man wrote this in 1930 and his understanding of politics, religion, smoking, uh, th there, if there is ever a, a piece of literature that proves the divine, uh, it would be outwitting the devil, to me at least, yes. uh, in understanding. And so for me to be able to play a part in elevating awareness to uh, my mentorship and Cleona's partnership, so we'll be announcing it in October, late October, hopefully at the archives uh, in Wise, Virginia, the Napoleon Hill Archives. So I, it's the most exciting partnership I've ever had in my life next to my marriage. Uh, and now that I know it's driven by the sign of the angel 111, yeah. I have even more concrete evidence that this is the amazing opportunity uh, of my life next to getting married. Wow. That's beautiful. That oh, really is wow. beautiful. I, and outwitting the devil is, an, is an unbelievable. I only recently uh, started, I came across it. Obviously, we know Think Grow Rich. That movie is, a, that book is as timeless as any work I've ever seen in my life. It's, yeah. it's, like, you, it's like you wrote it today. Yeah, well, yeah. Sharon Lecter in 2011, that's when it was released. And, and they couldn't believe in 2011. Uh, it, here's what's really funny. I was listening to it in my car. And my 14-year-old son was listening. And he goes, that's so cool that the devil, they got AI to, to be the devil in the audiobook, dad. And I was like, no, son, there was really no AI in 2011. <laughs> yeah. I go, that's actually an actor, son, it's not AI. But I, I loved his perspective, which reminded me, this is why we need to elevate these great works so that kids like my son, even if they think it's AI, they can understand how they can manifest, achieve, everything they believe in life uh, and have the opposition to the devil and understand why 98% of the people are interfering with their God, their potential. Yeah. Yeah. Drifter. We called it drifter to leader. We're on a mission to create, to turn drifters into leaders. And I have a funny quick story. I, this is my original outwitting the devil that Bob Proctor sent to me when I started working with him. And it, I was so afraid of the book and the name, The Devil, that I was, I was scared somebody's going to see what I was reading. So I, I like took a Sharpie and crossed out the word devil. <laughs> <laughs> that that was, awesome. he, he and his family were afraid to publish it as well for so many years <laughs> because of that and many other things that are written in the book that are widely accepted today and uh, more accepted in the future as it's done, it's done, it's done. 
Uh, wow, this is amazing, Craig. I'm so pumped that this was the platform for you guys to announce that. I feel honored. That was beautiful. Uh, we're going to bring on our second guest. Cleona, if you have some time, I'd love for you to hang out. But while I do, I wanted to ask you a quick question. Sure. You often talk about, you describe it as finding your divine godly purpose. I think that's so beautiful. How were you able to do that? Or, or how can someone listening on this Saturday morning begin to identify what their divine godly purpose is? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I would suggest, number one, go into nature get into nature you know and i think we hear the divine louder when we're in nature um so number one is go away be by yourself meditate number two you need to meditate and pray and listen very carefully and then number three is what do you love what lights you up what gives you energy when you talk about it? Like we could talk about this for weeks and months because we love it so much. We found our purpose. And so it's the same for anybody watching this. If you're looking for your divine purpose, those three steps, what do you love? What are you passionate about? What maybe even brings a tear to your eye? What could you talk about for days? What energizes you? And then listen. And then the way will be shown. You'll be given little synchronicities you'll be given little seeds of direction from the divine and you will find out your purpose okay, no, beautiful no, no better lead in to colin o'brady i'll tell you that when you talk about those three things yeah. uh he's napoleon hill recreated uh, out into nature meditating and doing what he's passionate about man i haven't seen you i had to interrupt because i love this guy he's amazing What's colin, up, good morning good morning how are you guys thanks for having me here we do Great, we're super pumped to have you. Where are you dialing in from? Where are you? I'm uh, I'm in Jackson Hole, Wyoming right now, my house. Um, but I'm actually getting packed up to, to fly to Spain today. I'm uh, a, dip, a little different kind of a adventure than normal, but uh, my 15 month old son, so a little baby, we're gonna be carrying him in a backpack across the Camino. So the Camino de Santiago is a pilgrimage trail across Northern Spain. So uh, putting him in a backpack and taking him for uh, a couple hundred mile hike, but might be the, the worst or the best idea I've ever had. We'll see, I'll, I'll let you know in a second. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm so pumped for this conversation. For our community, Dave and I, in case you guys weren't familiar with either of them, do a deep dive, play catch up. Con, I wanted to ask you, I know something that you ask often is, what's your Everest? And I'm curious, based upon you and all the extraordinary things that you do and have done, should everyone have one huge Everest or should they continuously have new Everest that they're chasing and that they're really excited about? You know, I think it's an iterative process. You know, I, I, uh, I started asking myself that question actually after I had climbed Mount Everest. Mount Everest was my Everest as a kid. I dreamed about it, made it to the summit in 2016. I've actually... Uh, at this point now, some of Mount Everest twice. Um, but after that Mount Everest, it was in my early 30s. I was like, well, what am I going to do? Kick my feet up and do nothing for the rest of my life? I got to keep asking myself that question in, in different phases of life. Um, and so I always say the top of one mountain is just the bottom of a next. Um, and that's not to just be like, you know, on this treadmill, you know, continuously striving, but that's to say in different phases of life, you know, whether that's, you know, going out and doing an actual big expedition, climbing a mountain, whether that's starting a family, whether that's starting a business, you know, whatever that might be. I mean, I think that we all have, you know, that the really gets a question around purpose, right? And one question I get asked a lot, I've actually got my book right here, one of my books, The 12 Hour Walk. I open it by asking that question, but then I also get this question from people that says, what if I don't know what my Everest is? Like, well, actually, what, that, that's actually a more common response than should I have an Everest? It's actually, I want an Everest, but I don't know what my Everest is. Um, and, you know, based on this call, I think there's probably a lot of motivated uh, folks who kind of have a direction, but there's a lot of people out there going, you know, I, I just kind of go through the motions every single day. And so one, one, one reframe for me on that is kind of to your question, which is, should people have multiple Everest? If they don't have an Everest, I always say, then your Everest right now is to discover your Everest. That is your Everest. And how do you do that? By trying stuff, by saying yes to stuff, by coming on people's Instagram lives, by listening to podcasts, by reading books, until you are inspired by something. And actually, uh, my methodology in the 12-hour walk is actually an invitation to say, hey, try the 12-hour walk. It's something to try. Go alone in your thoughts for a day. Um, get out there, and maybe you will discover what your Everest is. So in short, I do believe everyone should have an Everest, even if that is just discovering your Everest in any given moment. Dave, I could feel you 
energy. Yeah. That was awesome. I love this guy. I love his books. Uh, we, um, it, it's interesting because uh, Jesse Itzler and Colin did a thing during COVID where they ran a mile and then added a mile each day for a month. So it, it was serious, man, to run a mile and then on day 25, 6, be running 25 miles and 26 and 27 and 28. And I was blessed to join, but I, I purposely did something both to elevate the levity but also to show people that you don't have to be extraordinary like Colin and Jesse. You, you know, you don't have to climb Mount Everest. You don't have to go on ultra marathons. I mean, you, you look, you read Colin's books and you know his story. He has done some, to me, unbelievably godlike uh, things that uh, have put his entire existence at risk. And, uh, but I think it's important to have the David Goggins and the Collins in the world to show us what is humanly possible. But it's also very important to have the Dave Meltzers in the world that ran one yard a day and kept adding a yard every day just to show a commitment to consistent behavior for charity. And it was not an exceptional feat physically for me to run one yard a day. And I did run 30 yards on the 30th day, um, but I didn't miss a day. And I think there is as Colin suggests, a really important thing to look up to people to see what's actually possible with human nature. I love the saying that when you're ready to quit, you're only 40% of the way there. But it's also important for the middle-aged mutant turtles like myself to say, look, just doing your best and having an Everest, even if your Everest is one yard, that's what's going to get you to have your purpose be greater than your pain. And if your purpose is greater than your pain, you will live a passionate, purposeful, and profitable life. And I admire you so much, Colin, and I appreciate I went on the 12-hour walk, and I, I didn't realize how much it would change in my life. So I love that book. I highly encourage everyone to read it. Amazing, man. Well, one thing I want to say about that, too, Dave, is remembering that moment from, from COVID when you did the yard a day. You actually did it with your son, and you made creative ways to do, think about it every single day. So the purpose, you know, I'll double click on that. It was less about the mileage and covering the distance and, you know, the, like we were doing these marathons or whatever. But not only did you do it every single day, but you and your son during a weird moment in our history, April of 2020, had something to look forward to. And he'd be talking about it like, oh, hey, dad, like the next day, let's do it. where We hike a football. Let's do it where we this. And like that created a dialogue and a shared memory in a moment. And that in and of itself is obviously a very worthy uh, purpose. It's beautiful. Yeah, I love this. Um, so many places we could take this. Connor, I wanted to ask you also, I know you talk about this. This is somebody that, this is something that everybody can connect to in some capacity. How long does it take to break a perceived limitation? Uh, it's, a good, it's a great question. How long does it take to break a perceived limitation? You know, it, it, it's, it, it's, a, it, it's a question about time where, you know, I don't want to get too esoteric here, but it's like, it's either an instant, like one second, or it's an, an infinity, you know, a million years, right? It, it, can, be, it can be the full spectrum uh, is a different way of saying that. Um, I think it really just depends on what those inputs are, you know? Um, you know, I'll, 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 I'll bring it back to the 12 hour walk because it's, it's a passionate thing that I brought into the world, but there's a million different examples of this, which is we can have a self-limiting belief and not even know about it. So we can go through our life for 25, 30 years and just be doing this thing on, on, on repeat. And just, there's, there's no way you're ever going to get over it because you're not even in awareness about it. Right. And the next piece is you come into awareness about it and you go, you know, I hate being uncomfortable, but you're just like, that's who I am. You have to have that shift to somebody being like, wait, I have a growth mindset. I understand this is a self-limiting belief, but I can break that. But the question is, what's the catalyst to actually shift that? Um, it's a great question just because I'm sitting here with my book right here, but I broke this book down into the 12 or the 10 most common self-limiting beliefs I hear people have. Each chapter is on one of them. It's, uh, you know, I don't have enough money. I'm not strong enough. What if I fail? What if I don't have the right friends? You know, we, we know, we know, we know these, these common, common limiting beliefs. And the book in itself breaks that down, you know, from stories from my life and how we can overcome them. But the book also has a one singular call to action, which says, take a 12-hour walk. And what the 12-hour walk is, I'll explain it for a second, which is it's free to do. You can check it out, 12hourwalk.com. It's completely free for anyone. It's a very accessible thing. 
but it is outside your comfort zone. It's inviting you to take a day, turn your, turn your music off, turn your podcasts off, put your phone in airplane mode, and walk out your front door for 12 hours. Now, you can take as many breaks as you want. So I've had, you know, people in their 70s, a guy, 81 years old guy just finished it yesterday. You know, he took lots of breaks, but he still was out there for 12 hours. So it's not about distance. Someone you go five miles in 12 hours, you can go 50 miles in 12 hours. But as long as you take that time alone in your own thoughts. Now, the reason that I equate that to self-limiting beliefs is I have seen people, to your question, I've seen people break a 30-year pattern of self-limiting beliefs by taking one 12-hour walk by taking one 12 hour walk and I'll make that tangibly. The person that says, I don't like being uncomfortable. They're sitting in their house, they're watching Netflix, they kind of got their life sort of somewhat on autopilot. Now pattern interrupt. They actually take the courage to take the 12 hour walk. Hour three, hour four, hour five, their feet get tired. Their feet get tired, their legs get tired. Or by hour six or seven being alone in their thoughts, they've never been alone in their thoughts without their Instagram and their social media for, for 30 minutes, right? And all of a sudden they've got six, seven hours and they're facing five more hours. They're going, I want to quit. I don't like being uncomfortable. But something inside them says, you know what? I want to keep pushing. I want to walk to the end of this thing. And so they complete it. My app that does a 12 hour walk invites people to send me a video or post on social media their video when they finish. I have thousands upon thousands of videos. People have done, you know, 100,000 people in 40, 50 different countries have done the 12 hour walk at this point. Um, I have thousands of videos of people sobbing at their front door and not because they're in pain. They're crying tears of joy. They're crying tears of fulfillment, of, of passion, of purpose. And they're going, oh my God, this was the best day of my life. But then they realize I got there through discomfort. So in one, one day, they've actually had an experience that goes, actually, I've been so afraid of this thing called discomfort, but by putting myself in an uncomfortable situation and continue to pursue it, I have found myself the best version of myself on the other side. And I've seen, boom, immediately that limiting belief is gone. And the reason that I'm very passionate about, about this one book of mine, The 12-Hour Walk, is that it's somatic. It's, it's not just, hey, read my book and believe, believe my theory on this. I'm saying, read my book. I'm going to tell you some dope stories about walking across Antarctica alone, rowing a boat across Drake Passage, climbing Everest, doing all sorts of crazy shit. But I'm saying, go find out for yourself. It's free. Go to 12hourwalk.com. Free. Do this thing for yourself. You don't have to believe me because those tears streaming down your face at your front door, that's not because you read my book and I told you something. It's because you did something. And, I, and because it's uh, September 28th right now, I'll invite people. I do want, a couple times a year. It's just coming up next week. On October 5th, I uh, host the Global 12-Hour Walk Day, which is still alone. I, I call it alone together, but we do it in community. So if anyone wants to join, know that there's about 1,000 or other folks from all over the world that will be doing the 12-Hour Walk on that day. And I bring together people in a a community where you can chat and talk about your experience and share that because we are uplifted by others even if we're out there alone in the pursuit of that. So anyone wants to check it out, 12hourwalk.com or sign up for the Global 12-Hour Walk Day next week. Um, we'd love to have you. Um, but if nothing else, whether it's a 12-hour walk or anything else, how do you break that habit? You actually do something. You don't just say, oh, I have this. I, I know this thing. You, you do something in your life. You make that shift. You make that commitment. And that's where the real change happens. You're on fire. So there's that. Yeah. <laughs> it's so it, it, it's so intentional in its five layers or levels of intention of doing, saying, thinking, feeling, and believing. And I love the idea of movement within the context of your capability. And that's what Colin really allows us to do in the mindset, the heart set, and the hand set is to understand not just what we think our capability is, but actually to expand upon it to understand the potential, the potential that we have uh, within the circumstance of this 12 hours. And Cleona and I, earlier today, we were talking about this reconciliation of man-made constructive time and divine time. And I love things that allow us to have this experience in the construct of 12 hours. It puts a man-made constructive limitation to the infinite possibilities, probabilities, and perspective mm -hmm. that we can have. And it's people like Colin to me that not only provide the opportunity, guidance and inspiration, but they're also, to me, it's like watching Tom Brady play football. You know, I know, I know I'll never be that good. And I wish I was, and I was blessed to represent all the greatest athletes in the world. And I sat behind them all the time and say, wow, I wish I was as good as they were at that sport. And I really do. And I wish I could do what Jesse and, and, and Colin do. But I also am inspired because I was born with different skills, different knowledge and different desires. 
And as much as he can go across Antarctica and risk his life, there's certain things that I do to my capability as well. It may not be as physically impressive, but you know, try this is impressive. Try to say thank you before you go to bed and when you wake up for nine straight years. Try that. And I will tell you that it's not easy. It's 0.1 seconds, by the way, and it's free, uh, just like taking the 12 hour walk. But I know very few human beings that have been able to say thank you before they went to bed and when they woke up every single day of their life uh, for nine straight years. And, you know, for me, starting on my birthday, it'll be going into my 10th year, which is January 11th, by the way, it'll be my 10th year of actually being able to not miss a day. And that, uh, you know, what the, the hypnotic uh, currency that is created uh, through consistent behavior, regardless of what other people think is remarkable, you're remarkable, you're a gift, both Cleona and Colin, and uh, the consistency of Craig on his way to the wedding is impressive. Mm -hmm. So I know our time's valuable. Craig, you want to bring us home? Yeah, first of all, this conversation was so deep, so powerful. Love you all. Can't wait to connect offline. Uh, real quick, Colin, you kind of just told us, but what's the best way, where's the best place is our community to, to send them your way? Sounds like next week is a big deal. How can they get there? You said the website and also the book? Yeah. Uh, check out the 12 hourwalkcom The book, if you want to join the global 12 hour walk day, just hit uh, 12 hourwalkcom uh, That's the number 1212, 12hourwalk.com. Um, and check it out. You can sign up. That's everything about around the 12 hour walk is completely free and has an outsized impact in your life. So highly, highly, highly uh, recommend taking that walk. And if ne next Saturday is too short from now, you can do the 12 hour walk any single day. So check out the book. Um, and then, yeah, of course, reach out to me on Instagram here at Colin O'Brady. Uh, my other book, New York Times bestseller is called The Impossible First um, and all sorts of stuff online and things. So very, various ways to connect. Uh, appreciate you guys. David, you're an absolute legend. Um, everyone on this call, Craig, appreciate you guys. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, be well. We'll, uh, we'll connect again. I'm, I'm keep, keep inspiring the troops, man. You guys are legends. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Cleona, how about you? What's the best way for everyone to support you? Thank you, Colin. Nice to meet you. So Cleona O'Hara at Instagram or NapoleonHillInstitute.com. Simple, That's perfect, it. beautiful. Yeah. And, and Uncle Dave, first of all, I want to acknowledge Dave. Love you. Thank you yeah. for everything that you do, for the way that you show up and your consistency. And I love everything you said on today's show. Where are you going to be traveling? Are you going to be in New York, I believe, on October 7th? Yes. I'm going to be keynoting Ad Week, and uh, we're celebrating Junior Achievement's nomination, uh, their second nomination for a Nobel Peace Prize. I'm the Chief Chancellor of Junior Achievement, uh, and uh, we want to celebrate together October 7th uh, in that day by celebrating the Nobel Peace uh, Prize nomination of Junior Achievement. So we'll be in New York City October 7th and then do the SoFi Mastermind. Uh, but uh, I'm very excited about the announcement with Napoleon Hill, Napoleon Hill Institute, the Napoleon Hill Foundation. Uh, we're looking at doing some really big things and I'm really looking forward to incorporating Craig Siegel, Paradigm Shift and a variety of the CLS experience and community within what our future plans are with Napoleon Hill. And I'm just so proud of you. I'm happy for you. Tell your chauffeur that I love her more than you. <laughs> She's way more beautiful than you are. And uh, I like the beard too, by the way. Is that a little bit of gray mixed in there? That looks, that looks good. Uh, on, be a ferocious Buddha. Be kind <laughs> to your future self. Do good deeds. Have fun at the wedding. Give your parents a big hug for me as well. I will. And I love you. And thank you. We'll connect offline. Have a great weekend. See you soon. Bye. Drive carefully. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Bye.